that in apportioning blame wholly to one side, you're only going to create a further dissonance. And that's really problematic. I agree with you, uh, Shikha Mukherjee, on the first two points, but I don't fundamentally agree with you on this concept of ghettos and, you know, that there should... Well, of course, there might be a few here and there, but, the, but we must all work towards making those less of a ghetto. Dr. Dr. Ranganathan, I'm sure you'll agree with me. The only way to allow for people to intermingle is to make it very clear that there is no enclave. Otherwise, we land up where we were a few decades back in Kashmir. And, and we have all suffered. We have seen, I have personally suffered. I have seen the results of ghettoization. Uh, good evening, Rahul. You're absolutely right. In fact, I was going to say this, that I think uh, the time has come for all of us to completely reject this cushioning of <clears throat> the administration uh, uh, being lackadaisical and not acting when it should, and then cushioning the crimes by saying uh, the her police should have been a little bit more active. What do you mean by a little bit more? There are people who are being ethnically cleansed as we speak from places in India. Muslim areas, quote unquote, as Rahul, you said, is a reality. But this is sanctioned through religion. We might like to deny it and say, oh, no, no, don't talk like that. I'm sorry. I'm a Darwinian atheist. I'm detached from religion. Maybe that's the reason why I can talk about it dispassionately. You've seen what Dr. Ambedkar said about Darul Harb and Darul Islam. These are realities of life. When you talk about Muslim areas in Bengal, as you just now mentioned, what about the Muslim area in the Kashmir Valley? It's been ethnically cleansed. Can Kashmiri Pandits return there? They are being killed if they do. So let's just face the reality. And there are three points I'd like to make. Number one, you talked about the Muslim area. I would like to ask Ms. Mamata Banerjee, where was her uh, uh, vocal dissatisfaction, if I can use a very polite word of, of saying that uh, citizens should not act like this, when lakhs poured onto the streets in Havra and other places in Bengal uh, in the context of Nupur Tiwari? Saying, hang her, Sharma. Sir Tan Se Juda. Hmm. Where, no, 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 Sharma, I beg your pardon. Where, where was all that condemnation? The condemnation seems to be reserved only for Hindus, saying that you dare not venture into Muslim areas. And honestly, stop blaming the Hindus by saying they provoked the Muslims by making their religious processions through, quote unquote, as I said, Muslim areas or near mosques. The essence of Azan, which is, quote, there is no God but Allah. And no one has the right to be worshipped but Allah 4062, unquote, amplified through the loudspeaker five times a day, whole year round, near a temple, is not provocative. But celebrating Ram Navami and singing Bhajaman Ram Charan Sukhdai one day in a year near a mosque is... Kisko ullu banare hum lo? Provocation, by the way, is subjective. Only violent people are provoked into violence. Is this not action and reaction that you were saying, rebuking Narendra Modi when he didn't even say it? Now you are talking about action and reaction and talking of provocation. The very existence of a kafir is provocative. 986, 929, 456, 978, 2198, 470, and 100 other verses. So we should cease to exist. To be sure, we actually would. As Rabindranath Tagore said, and I quote, Islam has distinct enmity against all other religions. It is not just satisfied with observing its own religion, but is determined to destroy all other religions. And the only way to make peace with it is to embrace it, unquote. You don't seem to grasp what Gurudev did a century ago, that this is a clash of civilizations. But I ask you, was Gurudev Rabindranath Tagore a Sanghi? I'm sure today all you people would have called him a Sanghi.